one, two, one, two, three, yeah. Uh, you is a lie. Uh, you is not come from these sides. Uh, you cannot come to these sides. Yeah, gangsta, but my teeth too tight. Yeah, I see my eyes through the sights. Say the ones that didn't tell a good night. Bye bye. All white on my eyes, like rice. Stack up and get right at the sight. Hey, you ain't up in my price. 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 Money, my bank account, this precise. Hey, you ain't up in my price. Welcome to the Sports with Aaliyah talk show. Today's guest is awesome and the thing I love about him is that he's young like me and thriving in the industry. Um, Kevin Edwards, welcome to the Sports with Aaliyah talk show. Thank you for having me. I've really admired the work you've done for a long time and how you like represent for Wichita, so I'm really happy to be here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, if you're an NFL fan, you're in for a treat today because this dude has been everywhere and he's even been to the Super Bowl. So. We're going to tell you, he's going to tell you, and me, how he's gotten to do something like that at such a young age and to build off of that. So let's just start. You're from here. Um, talk about your high school days. Yeah, so I went to Wichita Collegiate. Um, I played tennis there, so I technically participated in sports. Um, <laughs> and I was sort of interested in video back then, um, so I applied to our video class and I actually got denied. Um, <laughs> So I didn't have any in-class experiences that I was able to do, um, but I always loved sports, big sports fan, and I had an interest in video, like I said. Um, so I started editing videos in my free time. Um, I actually started on Vine, of all places, and oh, okay. started making videos there from, you know, stitching together TV broadcasts and social videos, um, and then eventually moved to Twitter. Um, and that was just a way I like really learned a lot. I started off on iMovie. Um, so something like very simple to get the basics underneath me. Um, and I would make videos of players I really liked, um, and some of the players started to notice them. Um, and one in particular was, I made one of Bryce Love because I was a Stanford fan. Um, and Bryce Love retweeted it and the Stanford Athletics Department saw it and saw that I would be attending Stanford in the fall. Um, and they wanted to see if I had an interest in working for them. Wow, so that's kind of how you got noticed. So that's crazy to me because you always hear of like some of the most successful people have gotten cut like Michael Jordan got cut from his high school team and so it's crazy to see someone that like already so early on faced failure and then how you built off of that so that's really cool so okay Stanford so you go there what what did you what are you studying I guess yeah um, so for a while I really debated if I wanted to go to Stanford because schools such as Clemson and Syracuse have dedicated sports media departments mm -hmm. whereas Stanford does not yeah. Um, so I'm studying communications there, which isn't as directly applicable as maybe I would like. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a lot of applications for both social and then television and all, um, all aspects of sports media and even like journalism because mm -hmm. um, there's not really a dedicated journalism major. Gotcha. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too because people are always so surprised I'm sports management and they're like, why not sports media or sports or just journalism? And mm -hmm. so like, I feel like as long as you have the education and somewhat, then you'll make it work. Yeah, so absolutely. now let's talk about, I guess, your work for Stanford. And that's so cool that you got noticed through social media. So what do you do now with them? Yeah, um, it really speaks to the power of social media, um, particularly Twitter. I know LinkedIn is like a valuable tool for many people for networking, but I think in the field of sports media in particular, Twitter has been very yes. valuable. Um, I think you would definitely agree with that. Um, so, I currently am a production assistant with Stanford Athletics, um, which means there are four full-time producers alongside me. I'm the only part-time producer, mm -hmm. um, and I'll go to athletic events, I'll record, and then we might have a recap. Um, we've switched to a lot more long-form features as opposed to like quick highlights. Um, a lot of the producers have dedicated sports, and I'm technically the lead videographer for seven Stanford sports, um, wow. which they're the lower level sports, which makes sense, <laughs> yeah. um, being uh, rowing, synchronized swimming. Um, so not, not drawing a lot of audience necessarily, um, <laughs> but then I'll also assist for like football, basketball, baseball. Mm -hmm. um, and since we have 36 varsity sports, there's a lot of, like there's a need for videographers, especially mm -hmm. with five total. Um, 
So kind of jack of all trades, master of none. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I did rowing, so that's why I got excited when you were like rowing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. been there, done that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I love that you bring that up because first of all, I always tell my friends, I don't like LinkedIn. It's great, yeah. but like, they're like, why don't you spend a lot of time on LinkedIn? I'm like, because I spend so much time perfecting my craft of Twitter yeah, where I get absolutely, noticed. Absolutely. So I like that you said that. So someone finally agrees with <laughs> yes, me. Yeah. So um, before we talk about some of the crazy things you've done with the NFL, how do you balance being, I know you're going to be preaching to the choir here. We're very similar and I didn't realize how similar we were, but um, how do you balance being a student and working such a, a job in sports that's a lot yeah. of work? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's difficult. Um, there's a lot of sacrifices you have to make and I don't, using the word sacrifices is tough because I'm doing what I love. So, yeah. um, but I really do think you have to love it and obviously you have like a sincere passion for it, both the sport and the coverage of the sport. Um, I think you really have to love what you do and that can drive you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you, you, you have to sacrifice um, hang with friends or family, um, a lot of sleep also. Um, yeah. But if you have a sincere passion for it, I think it it will fuel you and it'll end up becoming easier. Yeah, and what would you say, I guess, is um, the hardest part about making those sacrifices? Because to me, I, I know what you're talking about, but what would you say is like, I feel like a lot of people watching them will hear that all the time. Oh yeah, make sacrifices, but yeah. when you're actually doing it, what, what kind of got you through that? kind of hump of having to accept the fact that you're making sacrifices. Yeah, um, I think an important thing is to develop an internal compass and you know what, what you make is good and you're progressing. Mm -hmm. I think I've done this, I'm sure everyone's done this, is to say my video was this good because it got this many likes, this many views, this many comments. Um, but And I still fall into that trap. Yeah. Um, but as long as like, I think I've done a good job of developing kind of an internal compass, like I know I'm progressing, I know this is good. Um, but yeah, it's difficult to tell your friends I can't hang out because I'm editing a video for Twitter. That's not like, yeah. it's not a good excuse. It doesn't feel good to either party involved. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that's what I need to do to get better and get where I need to be. Um, yeah. Honestly, I needed to hear that. Like, because <laughs> we do, we value so much of what our content is on how much engagement it exactly, gets. Yeah. But I love that you said that because I need to start thinking that it's not all about the retweets and likes, but yeah. just the compass. I like yes, that. Yeah. I will apply Thank that you. to my everyday Thank life. Yeah. I also think it's important to surround yourself with friends um, because if the friends, if you have friends that don't really understand why you need to yeah. not hang out or take time for yourself, I feel like that makes it so much harder too. Yeah. So now let's get to a part that I know a lot of people are going to be excited to hear about. How did you get started getting to film for the NFL? Yeah, so that's a pretty crazy story. I was a part of a Slack, like sports creatives group, I think is the title that they give themselves, mm -hmm. um, which I think also speaks to the importance of networking. I know everyone's gonna say networking is important, but yeah. it, I mean, it truly is. Um, and truthfully, I was not that active in it, but I happened to stumble one day across a listing from the NFL to apply for a program called the Live Content Correspondent Program. Um, wow, that's unhelpful. <laughs> yes, yeah, they just they just shorten it to LCC usually. Uh -huh. um, and it's it's and it's this would have been its third year, so it's really new, um, and it's basically it's centered around social. So a lot of my journey, I'm sure as yours has been too, is centered around social, and mm -hmm. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, and it's centered around getting content out in real time. Um, each team, it's each stadium rather, has more or less a dedicated photo on and a dedicated video LCC, um, and they work for both the home and away team. Um, wow. So. Stanford, where it's located, is kind of equidistant to San Francisco and Oakland, um, Santa Clara, rather. Mm -hmm. um, so they had me apply for both positions, and I didn't hear, they had me uh, create a fake Instagram story for a Braves game, because I was in Atlanta at the time, and I didn't hear back for months. And months? It, I think it was two months, yeah. That's crazy. And I had assumed, you know, football season was approaching, I assumed I hadn't got it. Yeah. Um, and then the Niners reached out and said that they would be interested in bringing me on board, which was obviously crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then I got to work for them during the year. A lot of games at Levi Stadium, obviously, um, but they would fly me out. I went to Arizona, Oakland, Seattle, Philly, um, and then of course the Super Bowl, which is an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be back next year. Yeah, I mean, I think your work speaks for itself, yeah. but um, that is just insane to me because I know that's a lot of people's dream right there and that mm -hmm. will open so many doors for you once you are graduated. 
and um, I know you made a TikTok about it and we'll get to your TikTok here in a little bit, but um, what's like your day in the life when you get to a game? Because I know it's, um, it kind of varies for everyone. Yeah, so. yeah, um, it really does eat up the whole day, which I, I mean, I enjoy, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, it does mean I'm a big Packers fan. It means I miss a lot of Packers games, which sucks. <laughs> um, I get to the stadium probably three to four hours before kickoff um, because they really like getting arrivals. Um, it's something that fans aren't going to see on a broadcast necessarily as mm -hmm. much, and it helps them feel like they're there. Um, and then you have to run back and upload it instantly. Um, and then, you know, unpadded warm ups, pad warm ups, and you're constantly running back and forth mm -hmm. um, to upload the clips. Um, and then, Kick off. Kick. Honestly, pregame is probably a little more hectic than the game, which doesn't sound intuitive. Yeah, I um, understand that. Yeah, it's it's under a lot more stress during pregame, um, and then in game you're also running after every touchdown. So I definitely get my steps in. I don't wear a Fitbit. But I was gonna I need, ask you that. Like, how many steps do you get? I need game? to, because um, it's a lot. It's a workout, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm usually getting jersey swaps after the game and uploading. So it's about a nine to ten hour workday usually. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I was about to ask you how many steps you get. So we lot. need to get you a Fitbit and yes. you'll have to update me. Okay. But right. that's one thing that I have brought a lot of attention to when I talk with my friends or people that are like, Aaliyah, what do you want to do with your life after Columbia? Mm -hmm. And I always is like, I want to work for a network. I want to mm -hmm. work for ESPN or CBS Sports. But nowadays, so many teams are hiring their own, even sideline reporters yeah. and media. So I love that you do this and you've tapped into it because it's there's – like even though there's now like a few, here in the future there's gonna be one for every team where they yeah, have their absolutely. full on camera crew, sideline reporter, anchor, stuff like that. Absolutely. So that's really cool that you're doing that. Thank you. So when, when did you get to, when did you find out that you'd be getting to go to the Super Bowl? How did that come about? Yeah, um, so it kind of been floated that throughout the year that they select, I think it was top eight LCCs from across the country mm -hmm. um, and I th there's there's only a handful that are in college. A lot of them are out of college. They're freelancers or they're working full time. This is a part time job. Wow. Um, and once again, it was kind of late in the year. It was starting to get pretty late. Um, and I know they had asked me to fly to certain games, um, but they had called and let me know that I'd be working the Pro Bowl and that I'd be working the Super Bowl. Um, but if the if the Packers won the NFC Championship game, I would not get to work the actual game. But mm -hmm. if the 49ers did. I would get to work the actual game. So it was very conflicting being a Packers fan, but also knowing <laughs> if the Niners won, I would get to work the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, so after that game, I knew uh, it was a very busy week. It was, it was like a 70 hour work week because wow. there was a lot of events during the week that we worked. Um, but yeah, it was, it was incredible. What, like, I can't even begin to think my feelings for being there and when it's all said and done. So what was that feeling like? I'm sure it was super surreal. Yeah, it was definitely definitely an emotional moment. It was something that I, like, probably top of my bucket list is work a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, and I never would have guessed it would have happened this soon on. Um, what was really, I, like, there's a lot of nerves pregame, obviously. You want it, it's a big stage, you want to get the moments. Um, but what surprised me during the actual game is that it kind of just felt like another game. Yeah. Um, which was, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a weird feeling because um, once everything settled down, it's, you know, same crowd, same field length, same players. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was very, very cool and it's something I'll remember. For yeah, this night. and I feel like this year especially, like, I feel like if you worked a Super Bowl, everyone would be like, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. But the fact that the Chiefs are there. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. And I know, I know how it is covering games or working games. It's... Sometimes I'm working a game and I'd cover it and people would be like, what's the score? I'll be like, shoot, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I know that you probably weren't paying that much attention to the score, but I got to ask, like, what did you think of that comeback for the Chiefs? I, I remember <laughs> it was the fourth quarter and Mahomes threw his second pick, I believe. And I was walking up the sideline and I remember having the thought that I'm going to have to work a Super Bowl parade in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Like, I was so certain. So, um, like you had mentioned, it's really difficult to get a good feel for the game when you're covering it. Um, yeah. And it's almost like you're not watching it. But I just, yeah, I, I still have a difficult time believing that it happened. Um, I was 100% certain that it was over. So, um, I know a lot of my friends were happy. Um, I don't know if you're a Chiefs fan. I, I, 
Yeah, okay, well, so my friend interned for the Chiefs, so okay. I actually, my, um, sorry to interrupt, like, your no, story, but no, my first NFL game was actually this past oh, season, really? and people are like, you're sports with Aaliyah, how have you not been to an NFL game? Um, but I actually haven't, so my first two games were Chiefs games, and one okay. was the AFC Championship, so. Oh, really? Um, I'm from New York, so Jets, but okay. I, you know, the Chiefs have a special place in my heart, okay. so I was happy awesome. about yeah. that. Yeah, so I know a lot of my friends, um, were very, very happy. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Then that's like what makes it even cooler is that yeah. everyone back home is just like, this is insane. I yeah. can't believe you're there. So before we do talk about now your budding TikTok career, um, did you have any, I know the Super Bowl was a surreal moment, but any players or anything that you just were like, I can't believe they're standing in front of me. I mean, you seem pretty chill like me where it's like, they're just another human being. Mm -hmm. Like it's, they're an athlete, but they're a person. But was there anyone in particular you're just like, oh my gosh? Yeah, um, I kind of talked about it earlier, but like, the Packers are a really, really big part of my life, which has also been difficult because <laughs> I can't be tweeting or posting or really doing anything to indicate I'm a Packers fan because I don't want to upset yeah. the Niners or they're very, very understanding, but it's mm -hmm. just, you know. Um, so just seeing Aaron Rodgers, someone I've watched since I was like, I don't know how old, 10, yeah. um, like in person. Uh, was like very very special for me. Um, I think that was one of my favorite moments was the regular season Packers game, even though they got destroyed. Um, yeah. And my first Stanford game too was just really really cool. I grew up watching Stanford games, so seeing Bryce Love mm -hmm. um, was a very very surreal moment. That's awesome. I love that. Well, okay, so I'm gonna bring it up now because I feel like every time like someone talks about TikTok, people are like, oh, that's just an app where like yeah. girls will lip sing to songs and dance, but you have had seen major success on that app. So uh, I saw the videos. I'm sure a lot of people at home seen the video. So what like compelled you to make an account and post? It was, I'm, I'll show a little snippet of it. What's poppin'? Who you Brand new whip, just hopped in. I got options. I can pass that bitch like Stockton. Just joshing. I'm spending this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top 10. I can put the ball in the end zone, put a bad bitch in the friend zone. This shit sound like an intro jet song, give me that tempo. Ooh. Told Pooh he'll fool with the shit. Told her don't let her friends know. In the bill and I move like a dime. Even Pettuccini or Vincenzo's. Me and my amigos got that free smoke on the West Coast. Yeah, I'm talking about pre rolls um, But what made you want to post something like that? Yeah, um, I will go on the record and say I was very vocally against TikTok. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like many people probably were, and I still don't truthfully know how I feel about it, but I do know that the algorithm is insanely powerful. It's mm -hmm. scary in a lot of ways, um, and it has its justified criticisms of it. Yeah. Um, but it's insanely powerful where someone can, like, I know we had talked about how, like, your TikTok is, like, taking off, and I feel like um, it embodies, like, anyone can have a huge audience. Yeah. Um, even on your first post, it's probably the platform where your following matters the least. Um, exactly. In a lot of ways. Um, so, like I said, my first TikTok, I had a friend who was also an LCC in college and he posted something and saw a lot of success. Mm -hmm. And I, at a certain point, I was like, I, it would be negligent to not, you know, try to yeah. reach this audience. Um, and the first TikTok received, I think it was like 1.6 million views, which is crazy. It's probably more than my Twitter combined, like ever. Yeah. Not even an exaggeration. Yeah. So, um, I still don't. Fully know how I feel about it. Um, there's a lot of scary things about it, and I don't know yeah. if I'm like reaching the right people. Um, mm -hmm. But it does feel nice to know that people enjoy the content and want to see more of it. Yeah, because from what I've seen from like your engagement, because I had a, a video blow up and it's, I reposted it, and now it's up to a million views on the second oh, time wow. I posted it. And it's a it's a sports related one, thankfully. The city's gonna break my heart. which is crazy because I started a sports TikTok and then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do a personal TikTok and do like a day in the life and stuff. Of course, uh, the second I posted a sports related TikTok, that's what blows up. Yeah. So I'm like, that's a sign. But anyway, so like that, they started following me and I'm up to like 20K or something, but they don't, it's crazy. But at the same time, I feel like I don't really have a following where they know me as the sports reporter yet. Mm -hmm. Whereas your post, people will be like, oh my gosh, man, I love your content, or like, can you help me with this? So like, yeah. at least I feel like you've definitely found your area of the TikTok yeah. world, which is good. Um, but, and then I saw you tweet about it too, just how it's so untapped. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a huge audience there, um, and there's like not enough like 
good quality content maybe. Um, I know a lot of it is centered around like spur of the moment content, which makes sense, but I think there's also a space for produce, like higher quality yeah. produced content. And I honestly feel like people our age um, that are just breaking into the industry are gonna be that bridge in yeah, between the absolutely. two. But I just wanted to bring that up because I, I love seeing you get the success Thank and you. I know how you feel because it's like, I actually recently tried to configure my numbers because I, I was doing sponsorships and I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to have concrete proof of how many views I've been getting. Yeah, so I tried to like do a math problem. Yeah. I'm not good at math, but to try to figure it out. But to think that like the amount of views I've gotten on TikTok compared yeah. to all of my other content, I'm like, it's insane. Yeah. So I definitely had to bring that up. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's a big reason why I'm like, we need to talk about this because I yes. can't talk about TikTok with anyone else because yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, hey, you make dancing videos, yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, absolutely. like there's a business side of it. Yeah. So but did you have any like advice? That's what I really want to talk to you about yeah. because you are, you're young and I know we already kind of gave some advice, but what would you say is your biggest piece of advice for someone wanting to really make the most of their college experience and get to work Super Bowls or get to do what you do yeah. at such a young age? I think I touched on part of it earlier, which is like not getting caught up in it's, I mean, it's cliche and it's kind of like not very original, but I do believe that like you can't get caught up in the engagement solely. Obviously it's important, yeah. especially if you're working in social, um, but like personal, I, I mean, the likes don't correlate to the quality as long as you know you're improving mm -hmm. um, and you are proud of what you made, that should be what's really important. And I think a lot of people um, kind of downplay themselves and like, oh, I can never do this, I can never do that. Yeah. And like reaching out to people you will be amazed where it gets you um, I never thought I would be able to work for Stanford um, but just like a simple reaching out to someone um, same with the NFL I was 100% certain I wasn't gonna get it so I think you're gonna get some no's obviously but it'll take you places like you never would imagine I think you are also a testament to that um, working for Wichita State going to an Ivy League school like um, you never know till you try so getting comfortable with failure, although you'll experience a lot more successes than maybe you anticipate. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Where can they find you at your Twitter? Don't forget to include your TikTok. Yeah, um, Twitter and TikTok are Keddy44, um, and then Instagram is KevDiaBrutes. Awesome. Thank you so much for thank coming Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. You can find me on all social media, FunShell18 and Sports with Aaliyah. Thanks for watching.